Hey guys, we got a great video for you today. We're in construction mode here. We ordered a 5540 from ARS, so we are putting it together. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on with it since it's a hybrid rack, really cool. But we wanted to take this time to give you guys a couple tips. People were asking us about tips. Um, so we're gonna give you some tips on feeding your ball pythons. So stay tuned. All right guys, so just real quick, this is what we're gonna be upgrading um, our 28 core tubs. These are awesome and they've done well with us, but they're really like, once they get to like, I don't know, like 1800 grams or so, it's a little snug, 1500 grams. These guys, if you can see by comparison, this is the 5540 and you can see how, like this, this. Yeah, yeah. It's like this long, deep kind of cave. It's super dark because this is clear. These are dark, so I think for ball pythons, they'll like that. I don't know, what do you think? I think this would be good. You could keep these in, in here until probably like 2,000, 2,500 grams. You get your big females, then have to go up to like the seven series tub, but I think it's gonna work out well. And how many stacks did we buy? On this rack, we got 12 stacks, so that's 48 slots. So 48 slots. So we bought the 5540 hybrid from ARS. Got and the hybrid, you know. The hybrid, and we bought two extra levels. Two extra levels, and um, I think it's going to work out well. Um, we may end up just getting two of those and kind of consolidate because we need to get some of these 28 quarts over for our colubrids. Our colubrids are producing now. We're actually getting some more species coming down the road. And these are perfect for them, at least some of them. Not all of them, we got other stuff coming up. I'm gonna put our rhinos in something different, but yeah, yeah, I think it'll be a good upgrade. So we have some tips here for you for feeding your ball pythons. And I've gotten a lot of questions lately and people have been messaging me and, and you know texting me, which I really do enjoy your guys' messages and your comments. Um, so this is one of the comments that we've you know, got a lot of. So we're gonna just show you real quick a couple things when you're going to feed your ball pythons uh, to do it properly. So there's a few different opinions on what you should feed your ball pythons, whether it's mice, rats, frozen thaw, um, ASFs. There's, you know, a bunch of different ways you can do it. And we're not gonna uh, talk about all the different ways, but we are gonna show you what we do and how we uh, can maybe help you guys in a general term. And if you guys have any specific questions, we can also give you that information uh, if you message us about it. So Ryan, we're gonna start on the smaller snakes. What do you got going on there? I have a snake. It is not a pile of poop. It is a snake. It is a DHI Mojave, probably a Royal Fire. Ooh. Whoa. Got a block Ben's face so it focuses on the snake. Whoa! This is, um, what, four weeks old? Five weeks old? Yeah, something like that. Somewhere in the neighborhood. It's had a couple meals. Uh, we just weighed it right here. It's 142 grams. Yep. Average ball python size when they hatch is somewhere in like 70, 80 gram range. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess we want to grab the appropriate size rat that we would use. Um, straight out of the egg, provided that it's not a runt. You know, you have some, every once in a while, there's like the odd 40 gram ball python that pops out from a little boob egg. Not them, but your regular, you know, 70, 80 gram ball python. We'll give a 30, 35 gram rat pup. This is gonna work out great. <laughs> this little guy right here, he's so cute. Eyes are still closed. Weighs this one's 26 grams. So it's but right there. 30, 30, 35 grams. Yep, you want right about the time that they start to open their eyes is right around when they'll be about 30 grams usually, depending on how hot it is at the breeder, oddly enough. When it's hotter, they open their eyes earlier because their mothers can't produce enough milk fast enough. Oddly enough. Just learned that. Now you know that. <laughs> now you know that. So generally speaking, 
we want to size the prey at them about about the diameter of the snake at the thickest part um, a little bigger isn't bad for ball pythons or pythons in general uh, you don't really want to go crazy on colubrids my opinion mm -hmm. I'm not an expert he says he's an expert so yeah what you want to do is make sure you take a good look at your animal before you pick out the prey item and uh, we do live as you can see we have a live rat pup and we also have frozen thaw but uh, we don't always feed that way so when you're looking at the snake you want to make sure that you are really inspecting it and know what size is good for them um, and then also the first few times that you feed them hopefully you kind of get the idea of what they look like when they're eating so that's a tip for the small ball pythons let's move on to the next size if you can get them on frozen thawed it's way easier but it can be a pain it's easy for us to get live and it's way faster to feed live rather than having to thaw the angle yada 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 it's a whole process when you got a couple hundred animals it can take a while yeah so so moving up to the next size ryan what kind of snake do you have there this not is, what kind what genetics this is a ball python <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is actually a pastel spot nose yellow belly leopard head clown female mm -hmm. you can smell the food in the air you get really jacked up look at this so pretty mm -hmm. she is let's do a little way out here 618 grams 618 grams so what we typically feed her is a small rat and I have a small rat here mm, let's see here get a cute little cute one here how much is that way so this one's a small and this one is 48 grams smalls are usually in the you know above so a pup is about 30 35 grams a weaned is 35 to 45 grams. A small, this one's a little small for a small, is like that 45 to 60 grams. This one may be better. This one's a little big weaned, and that one looks. Whoop. This one's 76 grams. 76 grams. So and she would have no problem eating this. Yep. So if you're going to a reputable rat breeder, or if you're breeding your own, um, there's a lot of charts online that tell you the size rats of what people commonly call pups, weans, smalls, mediums, and larges, and then jumbos. So make sure that you're, again, you're roughly the size of the thickest part of the snake, uh, or maybe slightly more, but not a lot more. So I wouldn't feed a medium to the snake. We actually don't really feed anything bigger than a large small, like a, a small in like the 120 gram range yeah because it gets dangerous with live so and we since we can get live and it's not that expensive for us we're lucky so I know some of you guys have really tough time getting good food for your animals at a decent price but I would rather give a larger animal three smalls that I don't have to worry about them getting to like a knife fight in the alley when I close the bin, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so. Also something that we do when we feed is we also check the bin. Um, so we'll put a, a rat in and we'll listen as we go. And if we hear something strike and it looks like they are eating or getting there, we check the bin and make sure that the everything is wrapped up right and things like that. Every once in a while, you have a snake with some gusto. They grab the dang thing by its tail the back leg mm -hmm. and he got a rat flopping all over the place trying to bite the crap out of the snake mm -hmm. we'll take a hook i don't even know where our hooks went construction zone construction we zone. have a, a thin uh thin mm -hmm. wire hook kind of not like one of the big thick ones and we go in there and we're checking on them if they have their mouth able to bite we'll kind of like put it in there so that they can't do that until they well we'll offer the the snake hook for the rat to bite on or um, direct their head away from the snake uh, things like that and sometimes 
when you're doing that and the rat's, you know, shaking around, the snake starts to realize that it needs to wrap up the snake, or wrap up the rat some more. <clears throat> the snake will sometimes realize that it needs to wrap up the rat some more at that point, and hopefully that gets everything done a little bit quicker. It's one of the tough realities of it, but, you know, it's part of it, so you guys should know this when you're getting into it. Let's get a bigger snake. How about this for a... Uh... Good old female. Ooh. Hang on one second. Just make sure. So we got banana and she had clown female. Been locking up. She's actually all food and uh, bowl wrapping. So it's building. Hopefully she goes late, late in the season. Our season is super late. Oh my goodness. Let's see. We'll weigh her out. She weighs. Eighteen fifty, eighteen sixty. Eighteen, almost two thousand grams, man. Eighteen sixty. Yeah, that's wow. good. Now she could take a medium, probably. For sure. Um, but we generally don't do that. We also do smalls, and we'll feed her at least two smalls um, every time she feeds. If you have a collection of ball pythons, you'll know that sometimes, every once in a while, one of them won't eat. They'll skip. So if you buy enough for everybody who have extras, you, you know, you always know you got that one or two that's going to take two or three of them. You can just move them around, shuffle them around if they decide they're not eating this week. So it all works out. And that's another good reason why you should buy the smaller prey that they can handle. Um, not too small, obviously we wouldn't feed a pup or a wean to this snake, but we can do uh, smalls to that snake and she's just fine. But if one doesn't eat, it's easier to give out a small to somebody than it is to give out a medium or a large. So that's another reason that we make sure that we keep generally buying just smalls. Smalls, weans, and pups. Make sure to like. Like the video. What do we do when we have live rodents that uh, nobody ate and we just couldn't... We fed everything and that was it. There's nothing we could do. What do we do with those live rodents? We set them free. No. That's not true. <laughs> We have actually a couple of rat racks in my garage that we put overflow in. Uh, it comes in handy if you have the space. You gotta understand breeding and keeping rats kind of stinks no matter how you slice it, no matter how often you clean them, like they're just, they're gonna smell. So know that. But if you can do it, having overflow, especially like if there's weeks where like, ah, I won't be able to get, you know, go out and pick anything up. I can buy two weeks in advance, feed them off, keep the next week's in my garage to feed him and water him for a week and then, yeah know, i'm ready to go next week so so as one of the tips i think that it's a good idea and what ryan's alluding to is maybe get yourself even if you have a small collection get yourself a little area that you can uh keep your overflow rats in um so be prepared Probably you can see it like a couple times a week somebody on facebook or something like ah my snake didn't eat and i've got two medium rats here i need them gone tonight and i'm like well yeah yeah, even if just you had like a fish tank that you put bedding yeah. in. A little fish tank. Know, a little water uh, bottle with the metal end. <laughs> so a couple more tips for you guys on feeding ball pythons. Uh, if you're having a, an animal, a ball python animal, that isn't eating, there's a couple tricks that we, we go through, especially when we first get them. Once they're here, generally, you know, we don't have an issue with them eating. If something goes off a of feed, that happens. Ball pythons can go off the feed for months at a time and still be plenty healthy. Um, I think in the wild they don't actually eat every week or every two weeks all year round. I am close. So, so you're fine if they don't eat for a while, uh, a pretty long while. You don't want to see them uh, starting to get a concave belly or skin starting to look like it's sagging, anything like that. Um, that would be a, a problem. But in general, if they don't eat for a month or two, it's it's really not a big deal. But if you're having trouble with a snake and you're worried about it and it needs to eat, there's a couple tricks you can do. One. One. No, we're not counting it down, but. Uh, is making sure that the uh, heat and humidity are correct or at least in a good range. Um, sometimes people will have it a little too cold and if it's even if it's just a bit too cold, they may eat less. So it's not like they're not eating, but they'll just eat less because their bodies are moving a little slower. They don't need the energy as much. Um, so. We you know, keep it ambient in here, about 80 degrees, 75 to 80 degrees, 
and we have a hot spot of about 92 degrees uh, for ball pythons. If you're in a tank, you know, you we like to see the heating pattern underneath, but make sure it's hooked to a thermostat with a probe so that it doesn't get too hot. Mm -hmm. And a really good tip, and I know right now it's tough to get, but if you had a temp gun, then you can see what the actual temperature is on top of the bedding um, to know kind of what the where the snake's going to be sitting, what the, that temperature is. And you'll have a hot side and a cool side so they can thermoregulate. And um, make sure to cover if you have a screen top, cover up like 80% of it with either like plastic wrap or something. I yeah. don't know, if you can get like uh, replace it with uh, like PVC panel or something, like something that would really trap it in. Yeah, that could also help with heat and humidity. If you're not having an issue with uh, either of those keeping that temperature, then you don't have to do that. But a lot of places in the country, it's hard to do, especially inside a house when, you know, usually in a hot area, people have their air conditioner on. <laughs> in summertime, everything drops down to like 45%, 30% humidity because you're running air conditioners, sucking all the humidity out of the air. And then in the winter, the air's drier, so it's like... These guys were like 70%, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. 50 to 70%, you're, do, you're doing pretty good. The next tip that you can do if your ball python isn't eating <laughs> is put it in a smaller space. So sometimes, even in the rack system, we'll have a snake that, you know, isn't eating, and so what we'll try to do is put it into a smaller area, and it's hard to do if you don't have a bunch of spaces. Um, we have, we're lucky, we have, you know, smaller bins, we have bigger bins, things like that. But what you can also do is take a, just a tubware container and, you know, black out the, the outside so you can't see through. And then maybe put it inside your tank or inside your, your rack system with the snake in there and the prey item. So it's just a smaller area so they feel a bit more confined. Um, that's one way that, you know, it could happen to help snake eat. Thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, tell us we're dumb, tell us we're smart, tell Ben he should stop wearing pink. I don't know. I like pink. Share the video, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Go to Herb House Rock. A lot yeah. of cool interviews over there. Yep, absolutely. Peace. Hey, you did it. We're gonna knock that stack over for sure. This stack? Yeah. Bet 20 on it. I won't. I got five on it. I got five on it. They so focus on the snake. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Every once in a while, you got the odd snake that grabs him by the leg, back leg, or the tail or something. Say that again? Because I was turned around. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. We're gonna You're get, gonna see my heartbreak. We are gonna get flagged on YouTube. Yeah, for don't copy harming us. people. Don't copyright us. For harming people with our voice. Every once in a while. You wanna you wanna lean over on that and then I'll lean on you like this? No. No. Why not? It's like I the, don't wanna lean over the thing the, for you. It'd be like this no. and we'll be doing one of those like no. like in blazing saddles. Uh -huh. huh? No. <laughs> Got a lot of good feedback about being real tight up in here like this. Do you want me to get in with you? I can get in with you. <laughs>